The Osage. They have the worst land possible. But they outsmart everybody. Martin Scorsese's latest film, Killers of the Flower Moon, is a true story. You gonna kill this Indian? How'd you know? <laughs> Focused on a lesser known moment in America's early 20th century history. You know, you got, you got nice color skin. What color would you say that is? My color. In the late 1800s, the people of the Osage Nation were driven from their land, moved to a reservation in Oklahoma, where oil, black gold, was discovered. Whose land is this? My land. In 1923, the tribe earned $30 million, spectacular wealth that became a magnet for crime. When this money started coming, we should have known it came with something else. They're like buzzards circling our people. A tale of murder and greed, the heart of Scorsese's film is an improbable romance between Ernest Burkhart and Molly Kyle. That's how you are. I don't know what she said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. <laughs> <laughs> The genius behind Taxi Driver, Goodfellas, Raging Bull, The Departed. This is Scorsese's 27th feature film. Two of one, and then two of the other all. <laughs> and sees the legendary director team up with longtime collaborators Robert De Niro and Leonardo DiCaprio. I was uh, sent down from Washington, D.C. to see about these murders. See what about them? See who's doing it. Martin Scorsese, welcome to 7.30, and thank you for giving us a work of extraordinary genius. Thank you. It's a nice opening line. <laughs> now, in this story, envy and greed are the motives for multiple murders. There's a federal investigation and a trial. But really, this is a story about people and interracial relationships. What drove that choice? I think what... what um, ultimately, uh, what ultimately uh, made itself evident to me as I was working on the script with Eric Roth um, was that I, uh, I found less and less interest, not to criticize this, but less and less interest in the police procedural aspects of it, which I enjoy watching, the, what you call true crime issue, you know? I like that, but I, don't, I didn't want to do it. I just didn't feel interested. So what, what is going on here? I got to know a lot of the Osage people and we heard these stories and going on, and so did Leo DiCaprio. And uh, it was an issue that was really interesting. Uh, the weakness of Leo's character. Is he to be condemned? Is he to be judged? Again, this is, yes, I understand, true. He did, he did wrong. He's weak. He's not a coward, but he's a weakling. Um, did he uh, change? because of World War I, we don't know. We see him get off that train, and he doesn't want any problems in life, he wants nice clothes, he's worked with his uncle, he doesn't care. The, the, the key here is that we discovered, as we were talking with the Osage, and as we are going through all this stuff, that Molly and Ernest were in love. They were in love. Now, when he gets pressured by his uncle, how far is this guy gonna go? When is he gonna stop? As Bob De Niro says at one point, you think it's going to go away. It's not going to go away. And I think this relates to, this. Could, a lot of people could relate to that. We put problems aside. Well, we'll deal with it later. We'll deal with it later until there's a catastrophe. The point is we're not sure. Ultimately, no one's really sure exactly uh, what he did with her, um, how he uh, organized, helped organize the killings of the sisters. One thing for certain is that she stayed with him until after the trial. And that has to do with trust and love. With Leonardo DiCaprio's character, how did you and he, working together, create someone who is both so repugnant but capable of engaging our sympathy? Well, I mean, I, I tend to, over the years, have made pictures with characters like that. Or mm -hmm. uh, I, um, I grew up around a lot of people like that. Maybe, I'm par maybe that's partially me, too. 
I, 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 there's an aspect of me in there. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm 80 years old. I've been trying to work on it for a long time. Who knows? Yeah. But um, I grew up with a lot of people who were scoundrels, but they were so charming. <laughs> they can get away with anything. I can't, I can't tell you. I <laughs> and so we were always amazed. I mean, they could be robbing you, and you could say, we did that so well. I take the money. It's okay. <laughs> Of course, he's playing off an epic late career performance by Robert De Niro. Did you know you were going to get that kind of chemistry between them? Um, I, I certainly, I, you know, I, I, I can't say I expected it, but it seemed natural. And interestingly enough, the first time they worked together was a very similar, um, a very similar relationship with the father and son in um, this boy's life. We were noticing as we were working, they started laughing. <laughs> said, this reminds us of this boy's life when they first met us, I know. <laughs> and for you, you've, you've worked on so many films with Robert De Niro. When you know an actor so well, does it change the way you direct him? Well, I, I, it doesn't. Um, that developed over a number of pictures in the early 70s. And, then, and that had a lot to do with trust and a lot to do with understanding that this guy would, first of all, support you if you had a problem with um, uh, the studio or the producers, uh, mm -hmm. as much as by those days, he had a lot of power in the 70s, you know. Um, uh, he'd work on it, you'd work on it, and work on it, and, and plead your case, so to speak. He was on your side. Um, he also never forced ideas. He never s insisted. He did ask that you try them. And if you didn't like him, you'd say, I don't like him. He'd say, okay, let's move on, you know? And so I respected that because many great actors at the time um, didn't behave that way. And so um, I tended to want to work with him. He also understood, we also were drawn to the same characters. He knew people that I grew up with. We grew up, we first met at 16 years old. And so um, here, uh, it was simply a matter of, uh, as simple as the wrong word, but it was actually a matter of costuming, glasses, hair, a certain look, and um, uh, a very seemingly benign attitude. Uh, then a strange, vicious touches, you know. Um, um, uh, and so uh, I just, I must say, he just was, by the time he put the costume on, he was Bill Hale. Uh, I didn't have to do much with that, really. I mean, you know, it's not that you you work it out, um, you you, dis, you discuss a scene, he'll say, I really don't understand these lines. I'd say, well, it means this or that. Or we could rewrite some stuff as we were going. I would do that with him. And certainly with Leo and him, we would meet almost every weekend to work on their scenes until finally, I think we finally, we actually finalized the last scene in the jail when they confront each other, when he goes to confront Bill. I think only a day before shooting. I have to make this the last question, unfortunately. You said something beautiful about making art at this stage in your career and your life. You said you strip away the unnecessary, you strip away what people expect. So how does that work on set? How does that change the way you direct a film? Um, it's uh, keeping myself in check and saying, do I need this or do I want it? Or do I want and need it? <laughs> and sometimes it's kicking myself and saying, don't, you're not going to use it. Don't. It, don't do it. Um, you know, let's emphasize. And, and, and dealing with a certain conviction about where to put the damn camera, it's always the problem. Where's the position? Where do you, what, do you, what do you want the audience to see and absorb? And for how long? You know? Um, and so this is a, that's why when they say, you know, to make a film, you're a master is not really to be a master. I mean, there's many, much more, much further to go, I think, because you're always learning the damn thing, you know? Martin Scorsese, you've talked about the need to save cinema. If anything's going to do it, this wonderful piece of art and beauty is going to do it. Thank you very much for spending a little time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really pleased.